What is going on you guys? My name is Hugh and welcome to part three of the Big Time Spider-Man Alpha. In this one we're going to be doing three different things. One of them includes this thing that's on my arm which is a web shooter. Yeah I know it looks like a cardboard piece of poopy but it's the best thing I can come up with so deal with it. But yeah this was a quick design that I wanted to come up with. Uh, it's very flexible especially with this elastic band so this will slide over my glove once I get the whole suit together and this is actually held on by some uh, velcro. Now the original plan was to design 3D printed web shooters but unfortunately we've been having issues with the 3D printer and the material is just not sticking to the platform very well. It keeps either sliding off or it prints it kind of funny. So we had so many failed attempts and I was like you know what let me come up with a quick super super cheap and easy to design to just kind of throw on the outfit for now. Henceforth this guy! This is what I came up with. I just slapped some pieces together and this is what I got. And I try to color coordinate it to the suit as well. Not only that, I'm also going to be revealing the undersuit which is going to be helping me keep in some of the of my skin from showing through the outfit. Now there was a flaw with that outfit. You can see through it, so you can see the person underneath, mainly like my skin is really, really white. So if, if the fabric stretches enough, you can see through it. And it just looks weird and it looks like I'm just standing there in my underwear. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. And so I came up with an idea where I needed to have an undersuit for it. So we're going to be doing that in this video too. And then the third thing we're also going to be doing is designing a utility belt so that I can be able to hold my phone and my wallet on me. So if I'm bringing out a string backpack for example and I have some other stuff in there and I can't keep digging around for my phone, I want to have it on my, on my person right in front center so I can be able to get to it easily and not have to dig around with my bag or stop and be like, hold on. There it is. So you got that? Mike, do we really need a materials list for this episode? Yeah, that's what I thought. You guys, you guys know what's up. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? So let's start off with the pants here. Now I got this from a company called Dark Skin, which I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can check out all their latest designs. And alongside that, I did have this Nike's skin tight long sleeve shirt to go go with the pants. Wow. I really need to work on my ass more. Next up, we got the tactical belt that I found on Amazon. It was only 10 bucks for this thing. And this is probably the coolest, most slick looking belt on the market. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of other ones, but this one I found unique to fit in the costume design, especially because of the buckle. Very flexible, very stiff, and it's not going to come loose on you when you're wearing it. And then this is the supplies I'm going to be using. I'll leave the phone case in the description below so you guys can get that. This will fit iPhones or Android devices. And then, then that secondary pouch I just had laying around so I could be able to put cards or business cards or anything I wanted there. Alright, so let's get to the real task at hand here. Let's go ahead and build these badass web shooters. Now first I did the design off camera just to kind of hearken to the classic Spider-Man from the old, old animated series on TV. And this is similar to how he made his cartridge web shooters back in the day, um, let alone how they did it in the new Marvel Cinematics Universe. So once I traced out that design, which I kind of handcrafted, and traced it onto this crafting foam board. Then start cutting it out. And this was the first version I did just to see if the design was going to look good. So I'm just going to copy and paste a few things off of this first version here. Because I didn't make templates for it. I just kind of hand did everything. But that first web shooter came in handy for copy and pasting some of those designs. Especially sizing too. There you go. I made four copies of this small little rectangle because it's going to go on a couple different places on the gauntlet. Now instead of actually combining uh, the web shooter onto the gauntlet itself, I actually made it a separate piece. Kind of like getting the idea of it's like a Bluetooth device that can connect to the web shooter on the wrist. Now that I got my pieces all cut out and copied and pasted, let's go ahead and glue some of these together. Now I'm going to use a little bit of this fabric glue and super glue to help put this together and make sure it's going to be super, super strong and it's not going to fall apart on me if I either start sweating or hitting stuff. Both materials are great. You can use either one of them. Uh, I actually preferred using the super glue a little bit more because it's a little bit stronger than the fabric glue. I did use the fabric glue on these rectangle parts because um, it actually formed a little bit better onto that main gauntlet piece. Now 
Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the coupling piece that connects the gauntlet together. Everything you see here was free-handed. The design I drew helped a little bit as more of a guidance to point me in the right direction what shapes and what size shapes I should make for this thing. But all this was hand done and I just had to make sure I had to copy and paste that first gauntlet or that first web shooter onto the second one. And I did change the design on this one so I can tell which one's left and right. But in any, it really doesn't matter. I can put each gauntlet on left or right hand or vice versa. All right, so I'm gonna use this mechanical pencil and chop off a little bit of it just to kind of give it a nozzle for the webbing itself. Now this thing was kind of hard to cut even with this little uh, crafting knife here, but I just went around the edges of it and I just broke it apart by hand and it worked. And then I chopped off a little bit of the excess piece that was still hanging out and then clipped off the rest of that clear tubing. Now I'm going to use that super glue, which is going to be the strongest thing to be able to hold this thing in place. It takes a matter of seconds for that thing to dry too. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a covering on top of these, just so that it gives it a little bit of design and also prevents that thing from falling off if I accidentally bump into something. Now let's go ahead and start putting these two pieces together, using more of that super glue. And I had some Velcro laying around, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some Velcro on the edges here. That way when I wrap it around my wrist, it's gonna stay closed and it's gonna stay really strong too. And still keeping the flexibility that is this foam. Now, even though this Velcro had sticky on it, have a little bit of sticky material on it, I used the super glue to give it a little bit extra strength. That way it's not gonna come off on me if I keep taking the gauntlet on and off. Just a little extra security on there. All right, let's go ahead and do the back side, put the soft part of the Velcro on here. I'm gonna use a little bit more of that super glue just so that that piece is not gonna fly off if I take the gauntlet on and off. And there you go, the completed version is done. And I did change the design a little bit. Um, I gave it a little bit more dynamic look, but I think it looks pretty cool, especially with the uh, detached trigger button so it looks like it's connected to the web shooter system itself via Bluetooth or some kind of wireless device. Now my buddy Xander gave me a sample of this green vinyl, uh, adhesive vinyl, and I had it just laying around and I didn't know what to do with it so now we're gonna put it to some good use and cover up a little bit of these rectangle pieces with it. Just had to mark off how long I needed it and how wide I needed it as well and then started cutting it off, copied and pasted. Now this stuff doesn't take much, it's literally like a giant sticker, but the material on the sticky part of it is a lot stronger than a regular sticker or a regular vinyl. So it's gonna stay on this foam really well. And there you go. So, I only had a certain amount left of this stuff, so let's go ahead and see what we can come up with here. Hey, there we go. I didn't want to put too much green on there, but just two of those rectangle pieces and the two parts on the uh, nozzle itself looks pretty flippin' sick. And it gives it a little bit of accent and matches the design on the suit itself, where it's got a little bit of green on there, but not too much green, just little bits and pieces of green on the suit. And I think it turned out pretty cool, pretty slick, pretty stealthy looking. So now I'm going to use a little bit of this Deco Art Dazzling Metallic Acrylic Paint uh, for some of the other components on here just to give it a little bit of extra color instead of just black and green. And I, again, I had a hand free this idea because I wanted to know what looked good and what didn't look good. So I went up with just a few of these rectangle parts, one in the middle and the two on the outside. Turned out pretty good actually. And I did at least three coats of this paint on every piece that I painted. So I let it dry for a little bit, put another coat on, let it dry for a little bit, then I put another coat on. And with those three coats, it, the color came out a lot more vibrant, a lot more sharper, and a lot more shinier too. And there you have it. I got both web shooters ready to go. 
It's got a little bit of silver, a little bit of green on there just to match the costume design itself. And this turned out pretty slick. Just for freehanding this whole thing, I had to come up with whatever I had to think of. And I think it turned out really, really cool. Just that green gives it a lot of shine. Just that brush silver as well. It's not super shiny, but it does give it a little bit of a different texture, a different look. And it does make it pop a lot more, especially that trigger. And there we go. That's how you make one of these random designed web shooters. Now this actually, uh, I got the idea from the, I guess the 60s, 50s, or not any of that. It's like the old, old, old Spider-Man uh, cartoon show that used to air on TV a long time ago. Because I remember from the original uh, Spider-Man animated show, and I remember growing up watching it, uh, there was an episode where he went over of how he built one of his cartridges or one of his web shooters. And I kind of went with that idea. And since this is almost like a splinter cell uh, kind of, nighttime night prowler kind of suit i kind of wanted to keep it stealthy uh, as far as the color scheme goes and as far as like um some of the details go on here i mean for like a quickie little web shooter it's not too bad i, I could have done a better job but like i said you know it's as a quickie little build not bad i mean i can i can work with it for a little bit i'm definitely going to do a version two of this uh maybe different materials or maybe we'll try to do a, th a 3d web shooter next time but for the next version of the web shooter i want to try and make a better version of this like a different like material or something like that now this belt is pretty dope I, i've tried it on and off the suit a bunch of times and this is like the most satisfying sound listen to this so awesome this is like a badass little tactical belt i just randomly found this on amazon which I'll leave all the materials, uh, this pouch I've had before, but I'll leave the belt and the phone case here um, in the description below when I got it on the Amazon page. Super inexpensive, the belt was like 10 bucks. I think this phone case was 12 or $11. Very, very inexpensive. But like I said, I wanted to have a little bit of practicality in the suit. So this works really well and I can be able to put extra stuff in here too, like coins and other sort of cards and stuff like that, like business cards that I might pick up. Uh, and I didn't expect this to be too, I didn't expect this to be really big. So you can basically just put your phone in like that. And then there's a lever down here. So if I can't feel anything with my gloves, I can hit that little hole there and I can pull my phone out. Pretty dope actually. So that's pretty much it as far as the utilities on the suit. I got the web shooter, got the utility belt, my wallet and my phone holder here. Um, I actually added an extra piece back here. This is a lightsaber holder. I don't know if you guys can see that from Orlando. We went to uh, Galaxy's Edge. So I, I, unfortunately, it doesn't fit the Luke Skywalker saber that I have. So I just kind of kept it in the box and I just threw it on the back of it. So like there's something on the back of the belt, like a little detail, I guess. But other than that, that's pretty much it as far as the utilities go on the suit. Very simple, very inexpensive. So now, after this episode, we're going to be revealing the entire getup. It's going to be so sick, man. This is the first Spider-Man outfit I've ever worked with and modified, I guess. So there are still some imperfections. Yes, I could have done a lot of stuff uh, differently. I could have done it better even stronger but it turned out pretty good and i have tried the whole entire suit on with the mask the belt the web shooters everything and it feels great it's not uncomfortable it's very flexible i can still move around in it uh it's it's pretty pretty cool i, I definitely got to get like a little mannequin to display the suit on just because of how nice this thing looks if you guys enjoyed this third part of this build be sure to give it a fat thumbs up and i'll see you goons Two ways. Spooky Empire coming up and in the final costume review. Enjoy the weekend, guys. Oh, yeah.